Hi Year 10, this is Mr Azapardi with another video. This one's uh, a video on the assessment that we did before Christmas, so it's giving feedback on that assessment. So look, what I'm going to do in the video is I should have, you should have received, I should have sent you by this time, um, scanned copies or photographs of copies of, of your assessment papers from before Christmas with my marks on them. And then in terms of to, this video is really to show you where you picked up the marks, where people dropped marks and things like that. Um, so yeah, what I want you to do is sit with the paper in front of you and a blank piece of paper as well. And then just as I go through the answers, anything that you could have added to your paper, write it down on the blank piece of paper. So you just put A for question A and write down anything you could have added for question A, B, C and so on, just anything you could have added. So that could be quotes, uh, uh, statements, key terms, extra bits of explanation, there's little points here and there, occasionally I'll point out like, that. well, this this would have been a good answer, but even better if you'd done this, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, so just going to go through each question, basically. Uh, so we've got the structure that we're supposed to use there on the board, on the, on the first slide. Here are the questions. Give three purposes of marriage, the three marker. Explain different Christian views about raising children religiously. Compare different Christian beliefs about contraception and marriage should be between a man and a woman. Discuss this statement. So let's go to the first question. Give three purposes of marriage according to Christians. Look, at, because it says three things, it's looking for three bullet points, not an SEE. So you can just put down three things. Reproduction, to have sex without being a sin, and so that God will add strength to their relationship. Most people did well on this question. Occasionally people did two bullet points that were very similar to each other. Drop to mark like that. Sometimes people put things were a bit vague. I think if people put to, to strengthen their relationship without saying to, to, so that God will strengthen the relationship, I may not have given you a mark there. Um, yeah, but generally it was good. Okay, so in these longer questions, I'm gonna, I've color coded my answer so you can see what my statement in red evidence in blue explanation in green so let's go through this one about raising children religiously uh, first paragraph exclusivist christians think that it's extremely important to raise their children religiously because they believe that a person must be a christian in order to get to heaven in the bible jesus says i am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me this makes exclusivists think that only followers of jesus will go to heaven so they will raise their child religiously by doing things like taking them to sunday school or reading to them from the bible at home now as i go through i should say you know these are my answers it may be that people have picked up points by doing different answers um, so it doesn't have to be answered in exactly this way although there are certain questions where there's not there's not that much um uh, different from what I've written that you could really write and pick up the points. This is a kind of case in point because you need to talk about exclusivists and pluralists for this question. So the three things from that paragraph I would pick out are make sure you've got the key term exclusivist. You have the quote. If you haven't got that quote, that's a quote you should know. So write it down. I am the way, the truth and the life. You don't even need that whole bit as long as you've got no one comes to the father except through me. And lastly, I mean, I give people mark the full marks for this paragraph, even if they didn't have this bit. But I would add it just in case, um, because I think the examiners like to see it. It's good to say something about how they would raise child, children religiously. So, for example, I've put there taking them to Sunday school or reading to them from the Bible at home. Those kind of things just show that you know what it means to raise children religiously when you're answering this question. Okay, next one. Pluralist Christians may place less, less emphasis on raising their child religiously, as they believe that people do not need to be Christians in order to get to heaven. In the Bible, Jesus says, why does it say lists there? No idea why it says that. My father's house has many rooms. To pluralists, this means that there is room for people of all faiths in heaven. Because of this, although they may speak to their children about the moral teachings of the Bible, they may not raise them in a strictly religious way. Three things to say about this. Again, key term, pluralist. You need that key term. You need to have that quote if you haven't got it. My father's house has many rooms. A good one to remember because it's nice and short. And last thing, yeah, try to avoid the idea that pluralist Christians are against raising their children religiously. They're not against it. They are, all they would say is they don't think it's as important as um, exclusivist Christians could, would. I would imagine that most, I would say most liberal Christians do raise their children religiously, but they don't just, they just don't put as much emphasis on them needing to be religious as exclusivists do. Okay, look, this is, I've put, when I go through the slides, I've always put the 
the the last paragraph uh, on the top of the next slide because when I do it in class, it helps people who are going a bit slower than other people. So you just can ignore that that slide, that uh, top paragraph. Then I'm going on to the last one, which says which is about the Amish. Now th this uh, first thing to point out is that a lot of people didn't get a third point here. They did exclusivist pluralist, and they couldn't think of a third thing to put in. That's why we talk about the Amish to give you a third view. So the Amish are an exclusivist Christian group who have a unique approach to raising their children. While they are young, Amish children are raised very religiously and kept apart from non-religious people. However, from the age of 16, they are allowed to spend a period of time known as Rumspringer away from the community and its strict rules. The idea behind Rumspringer is that while children should be raised religiously, they should be aware of what life outside Christianity is like so that they get to make their own free and informed choice about whether to follow God. So two things are important here. One is the key term rumspringer and an explanation of what it means. What is rumspringer? And secondly, you need to explain the reason behind rumspringer. The real reason is this is what it says here. Uh, Amish people are exclusivists and so believe children have to be raised very religiously. But they would think that if you just raise the child religiously and didn't give them a chance to see what the non-religious world is like, then you couldn't say that, that child has made their own decision to join the community. You've got to be able to give, they've got to know what it's like outside their community before they make their own decision. Otherwise, it's not a worthwhile decision. Okay, question C, uh, compare different Christian beliefs about contraception. Uh, Roman Catholics are against all artificial forms of contraception because they follow natural moral law. One of the five purposes of humans according to natural moral law is to reproduce. To Catholics, this means that the purpose of sex, I've missed out a word there, the purpose of sex should be reproduction, and therefore that artificial contraception is morally wrong. However, they do allow natural forms of contraception, such as the rhythm method. Things to point out here, well, this is nice and simple. You've got to talk about artificial forms of contraception. I think some people might miss points when they, if they said Catholics are against all forms of contraception. If you just put Catholics against contraception, fine but I'd rather have artificial. And if you put all forms of contraception, well, that basically is wrong because they're not against natural forms. So another thing you can see here, I, so my evidence is just the natural moral law, uh, the, the purpose, then I explain in it, explain it. But then if you can see, I've got some blue at the end because sometimes when you do your SCE, you kind of think, well, there's an important fact here that I want to add on here that I haven't explained already. In that case, stick it at the end. So I've just said, however, they do allow natural forms of contraception such as, the, such as the rhythm method. I don't know whether that should be in blue or in red again or what it should be because it's not really part of any of those things but it's an extra thing to put at the end. Um, on the other hand, second paragraph, conservative Protestants accept most forms of contraception but do not allow the use of the morning after pill. They follow divine command theory which says that what is right and wrong is based on what God commands in the Bible. The Bible does not mention contraception and therefore in most cases they think that there's no no reason to be against it however the bible also says thou shalt not kill conservative protestants believe that this shows that the morning after pill is wrong because it works by ending the life of a fertilized egg now you can see here how um i've done statement i've done like two bits of it why they're in favor of most forms of contraception and why they're against other forms of uh, some forms of contraception and um And so I've done, when I've done that, I've done uh, evidence, explanation, evidence, explanation. That's fine. As long as you've got your evidence and explanation in there, it doesn't matter if they're mixed up a little bit like that. It, I think that it made more sense to do it th this way than to do all the evidence first and then all the explanation. Again, you should note that I've started that paragraph with on the other hand, just to make that clear that in these part C questions as I talked about, you're trying to make a contrast. So you're trying to show where you're comparing and trying to show how they're different. The use of the phrase, on the other hand, is useful uh, there because it really highlights to the examiner that you, you're, you're seeing the difference between them. Okay, the top paragraph here is just the conservative Protestant one again. If we look at the last one, liberal Protestants accept the use of contraception because they follow situation ethics. This theory says the most important teaching in the Bible is love your neighbour. Therefore, liberal Protestants accept the use of contraception when this would be the most loving thing to do. For example, when it helps stop unwanted pregnancies or the spread of STIs. I think I've pointed this out before, but you need to make sure that as far as possible, when you use love, your, one of the problems with love your neighbour is that people want to use it all the time. And so examiners get a bit kind of suspicious of people using it all the time. 
it kind of they might they think they end up thinking it's the only quote that people know well the the way that you can get over that is by showing them that you can really apply the idea of love your neighbor in different situations so you should be saying when you use love your neighbor you should be saying not just this makes them accept contraception if it's the most loving thing to do but give examples of when it will be the most loving thing to do so stopping unwanted pregnancies stopping the spread of stis that's a loving thing to do and therefore contraception is okay okay and we want to part d last question okay marriage can be between a man and a woman discuss this statement now uh, i'm actually just going to put the uh, uh, evidence and the criticisms onto this part i'm not going to go through the whole thing but a couple of things to say about this question the first thing is a lot of people missed a mark on the uh, introduction because they didn't put their own their own point of view in remember there's two things you need to do in the introduction one explain what the statement is it turn the statement into a question what questions it asking so you know marriage between a man and a woman it's nice and easy to turn it into a question because it says, set, raises the question of see this statement raises the question of whether marriage between a man and a, whether same-sex marriage should be allowed that kind of thing and then at the end then in the introduction can you put your view there you know i agree with the liberal christian view or whatever it is that you agree with but let's go through uh, so i'm just going to go through evidence and criticisms here so conservative protestants i start with conservatives would agree uh, with this quote because it says marriage should be between a man and a woman so the quote is a the statement is against uh, same-sex marriage so conservatives agree because it says in the bible if a man lies with a man as one lies with a woman both of them have done what is detestable most people got that quote sometimes it was not exactly right but as long as it's mainly right it's okay um you know, and then you've got to explain that quote. I'm not doing SEEs up for this one. I'm just doing the evidence and the criticisms. How would you criticize it? Well, liberals say that the Bible was written by humans and parts of it reflect the prejudiced views of these humans. So I would, if sometimes you just have to use the liberal view to, to, to um, the, the stuff you're going to use in your evidence for liberal Protestants as your criticism of conservatives. But sometimes you can do it a bit differently. So for example, here, our liberal Protestant view is going to be based on love your neighbour, but the criticism of the conservative view is that is the other part of the liberal view of the Bible, of um, ethics, which is they don't follow the Bible because they don't think the Bible comes from God. They think the Bible was written by human beings and therefore a lot of the stuff in it just reflects human beings and their prejudices and the things they thought all that time ago. So again, if you haven't got the, the, the quote or, or you haven't got the um, criticism in your answer, write it down. Uh, Catholics would agree, but for a different reason. They say natural moral law says the purpose of sex is for uh, reproduction, and therefore man and a man, people in the same-sex relationship cannot reproduce, therefore um, it's wrong. Um, how, criticism, well, there's different ways you can go with the criticism. You know, we, we talked in, in the lessons, I think, about the idea of, well, um, the idea of natural moral law is based on the idea that same-sex relationships are unnatural in some way uh the catholic view would be that but what about the fact that same-sex relationships are um are very common in nature among animals all the scientific studies show that how can they be uh, unnatural if they occur within the animal kingdom but my criticism is a different one i've put this that for many christians and many liberals would think this reproduction is only one purpose of sex another is for enjoyment and intimacy so they so people could say well, actually, if you're saying same-sex marriage is wrong because the purpose of sex is reproduction, if that's not right, if the if sex has lots of different purposes, including intimacy, for example, then um, the Catholic view is wrong. There's no reason to be against same-sex marriage. Liberals would disagree with the quote because they teach they follow the teaching of love your neighbour. Again, remember if you are you need to explain why does that love your neighbor lead to an accepting same-sex marriage but well, it would be because they would say it's the quality of relationship that's most important love is the most important thing so is it a loving and kind relationship supporting supportive and uh, kind or is it not that's more important than whether it's between a man and a man or a man or a woman and so on the criticism here picking and choosing which parts of the bible to follow there this is this common criticism of liberal protestants that they're 
not following everything in the Bible, like Christians should, according to conservatives, but they're picking and choosing just the bits of the Bible they, that agree with what they already say. Okay, so that's everything. Um, again, just make sure you've got your notes uh, on the things that you, you know, could have improved on your answers, and then just make sure that goes in a plastic wallet and goes in your uh, folder along with your assessment. Um, we're going to do a task to kind of follow on from that, um, a little piece of homework to follow on from that. I'm not sure. I'll, I'll let you know uh, when I, I put this lesson up, when I want you to um, hand this homework in, because you've just done a 15 marker, so I don't want you to have to do one straight away. But um, uh, yeah, the, the, the task is going to be to do this. So look, here are two um, 15 mark questions. Uh, Christians must pass their religion on to their children, discuss this statement. And there is nothing wrong with using contraception, discuss this statement. Now, what I've done here is I've tried to make two 15 markers that are based on the content of the six markers we've done already. I thought you could, I could just get you to rewrite one of your exam questions, but considering I've gone through point by point the exam questions, that should be pretty straightforward to do. I, would, I think this would be an e a better thing to do, which would be to... Yeah, write a 50 marker on one of the topics that do you did your six markers on. Now that you've got the kind of detailed knowledge for the six marker, you should be able to apply it to a 50 marker. So Christians must pass their religion on to their children. It's just this, just really asking, you know, what's that question about? It's just really saying, should Christians raise their children religiously? And then you so you could look at the different views. You could say, what would the Amish say? You could say, what would the what would exclusives say? What would pluralists say? You can even in this situation bring in Richard Dawkins. Now, some people brought in Richard Dawkins in that six marker and didn't get any marks for it because Richard Dawkins is not a Christian, and that question, the six marker, just asks about Christian views. But here, in a fifteen marker, you can put one non non Christian view in if you want to. So. Um, you got four different possibilities to talk about. Um, obviously, you have to think about how to criticise the different views, but see what you can do on that. Um, then, of course, you need to do an introduction and a conclusion. Um, the second question is this. There is nothing wrong with using contraception. Discuss this statement. Again, it's quite nice and straightforward because you can, you've got the three views already. You just need to talk about how to criticise different views. Uh, you need to do an introduction and a conclusion. You can just use Catholic Protestant and uh, liberal, or you could do two two um, Christian views and one non-religious view. For example, you could do a utilitarian view. Utilitarianism would, of course, be in favour of contraception on the grounds that uh, it, it makes most people happy um, by preventing unwanted pregnancy, preventing STIs, and so on and so on. So, pick which question you want to do, and yeah, write that fifty marker, and I'll set a date for when it's to be handed in. Um, if you've got any other questions about the assessment, just let me know. If you think you're not really, if uh, even after watching this video, there's parts where you're like, well, I don't know why I didn't get a mark here, or you're not sure where you got your marks from, or anything like that, do let me know. Um, yeah, uh, that's it. Okay, thank you. Bye.